Hi everyone, I've been fully using Linux as my daily driver for more than half a year by now. That might not sound like much at first, but I have started experimenting with it on and off since about 2020. I was working on a video regarding Linux in general when PewDiePie suddenly dropped his own Linux video. Who am I to not grab this opportunity by the balls and help out with my experiences and maybe even get some people to try it as well? I think it's a nice experience and yeah, way cheaper. And that's why in this video I'm going to explain my setup, the one running on my girlfriend's PC and my recommendations for you. I have something for every level of technical expertise in store, even for senior citizens. The topics modding and more complex stuff regarding gaming on Linux would go beyond the scope of this video, but I plan to release videos regarding these soon as well. So. If you don't want to miss them, subscribe for when they drop. But without further ado, let us begin. Chapter 1. Must have programs. Proton. You need Proton for gaming. At least if you want to play games which natively run on Windows. And with that out of the way, what does it do and how do you get it? Simply put, Proton translates Windows specific instructions to something Linux can handle and then you can play your games. Hooray! To get it, you simply have to install it. But not so fast. As always with Linux, there are multiple ways to do that. The one that usually just works and the other one that will send you down multiple very complicated rabbit holes. Therefore, let me start with the easy one. Flatpaks. Flatpaks are software distributions that run in a sandbox environment. That means they are basically isolated from the rest of the system and everyone who uses a Flatpaks has the same experience. Therefore they are stable and solutions for eventual problems are quick and very easy to find. In order to get started with gaming, you simply need to install the Steam Flatpak for Steam, preferably with the Proton GE add-on, more to that later and the Heroic Games Launcher to play your Epic, GOG and Amazon games. That's basically it and it should cover most needs. Proton gets installed with those as well. Finally, you have to allow the Flatpaks access to the folders where you want to save your games. Like I said before, they only have access to so much and are more or less isolated from the rest of your system. Therefore, everything you want it to have access to, you have to grant it access to in the first place. That makes it quite safe as well. The more difficult variant for getting the programs for gaming is to install them directly onto the system. That allows easy access to everywhere on your system and it makes the installation of plugins and extensions much easier. This kind of stuff is somewhat different for each Linux distro. Therefore... Chapter 2 Distro choice. First of all, does the distro really matter? Yes, but no. That's why this is not chapter 1, because Proton is more important. Second of all, what is a distro? Well, a distro is a flavor of Linux. In short, it determines the pre-installed software, the design philosophy, the look and feel of the system and how additional programs are handled and installed. I personally use Arch, by the way. Do you want to want Arch as a new Linux user? Eh, only if you want to have Linux as a hobby as well and not just have a simple setup at game. My recommendation for the smoothest transition to Linux is therefore Linux Mint. My girlfriend uses it, her mother uses it, her sister uses it, PewDiePie uses it and I think there are pretty much able to play everything they like and use most of the software or alternatives they want as well. From the look and feel it is the most Windows-like distro and therefore makes transitioning really easy and you also find uh, things like a task manager like program and you type in task manager even though it's not called that. Another big pro of Mint is that it is an Ubuntu-based distro, which is Debian-based, and that does mean, in short, they are very stable and everything usually works and goes through a lot of testing. So, 
Why do I use Arch? It is more or less the most cutting edge distribution. It is very flexible and it allows easy access to the newest release of pretty much every Linux software. That is somewhat important for some games. And it is also what the Steam Deck's Steam OS is based on. Therefore, it has some pros, but a lot of cons. But if you nonetheless want to try Arch Linux, the easiest way to handle that is to try Endeavor OS. It comes pre-configured with a lot of stuff and has been in recent years one of the most successful Arch Linux based distributions. For example, you don't have to install something to just get a desktop. So that's great for everyone who just wants to try Linux instead of build it. And the third big pillars of Linux distributions next to Debian based and Arch based are Fedora based ones. Those are also very stable and also reliable. But I don't really have any experience with those. But if you wanna try them out, I would recommend Best OS for gaming or simply plain old Fedora as well. And then there is also OpenSUSE and their distros. Chapter 3 Optimizations. Now we finally arrive at the point which makes or breaks certain games. Sadly, not everything is as easy as clicking play and enjoying it. If something doesn't work properly, the very first step you should take, if it's a Windows game, is to have a look at the ProtonDB. There, games have a verification regarding their compatibility with Linux. They are rated from, I think, bronze to silver to gold and finally to platinum when it's near native experience. Or sometimes even better than on Windows. People also post settings that work for them with every specific game there is. Those are to be taken with a grain of salt because some settings are just snake oil and many users just copy and paste from one game to the next and don't really think about what the settings do. But if you don't know how to get it running, look there. The aforementioned Proton GE is also something that is used a lot. It is a custom Proton version with some patches for better compatibility. It and Proton Experimental are my go-to versions for games. Both are also available in the flat pack, so they are easy to get for your games as well. Many, myself included, often launch games with Gamescope and or Game Mode. Those are both different programs. Game Mode just sets the PC into a power priority mode, instead of, for example, energy saving on a laptop. Gamescope, on the other hand, is simply amazing. It launches games in an isolated compositor, that means they launch outside of your normal desktop and therefore you can set up tons of options to optimize and enhance your gaming experience. You can for example enable HDR, lock the cursor to the window and enable adaptive refresh rate for FreeSync and G-Sync. You can also simply enable FSR for simple upscaling with games that are not 1080p for example and have them run at 1080p upscaled. Another very important thing to mention are graphic cards drivers. The ones coming with most distros simply just work. Having an AMD card is an advantage in the Linux space. Default driver for those should be the Mesa driver, but there is also a proprietary one from AMD, which has, for example, better ray tracing implementation, but other deficits. I personally use Mesa. Nvidia is a bit more complicated, but it has gotten better in recent years. Many distros install the best driver for Nvidia by default, especially gaming based ones. And my final recommendation for optimizations is to use a Linux Zen kernel. What is that? Is it better? No. But yes. It has other priorities than the default Linux kernel. It is supposedly better for desktop use. It has higher power consumption, but it functions better with multiple loads as well. 
it prioritizes responsiveness instead of high throughput. What does that mean? For example, I can properly stream and play Monster Hunter Wilds at the same time because it better schedules both internally. Back in the day when I used the normal kernel, that was hardly possible because Monster Hunter drained the resources and the kernel didn't say, hey, also use some for OBS. It simply just more or less halted OBS and I just played the game. Like that, both run very well and my PC consumes a bit more power. But if you play highly intensive games, you shouldn't worry about that too much. Additionally, it was also a fix for running Monster Hunter Wilds reliably on both my and my girlfriend's computer. Before that, we both crashed from time to time, but since then, it is a smooth experience. But that is just my experience with it. I haven't done any proper testing and I might be completely talking out of my ass. The Zen kernel for Arch Linux based systems is simply called Linux Zen. In Debian based systems, including Linux Mint, it is called Licorix. Certain distros also come with Linux Zen by default, for example, Garuda. Conclusions. Well, in the end, I have to say, gaming on Linux, at least for myself, works very well. I can play basically every new game. I just can't play some games with heavy anti-cheat, like League of Legends. But if you can abstain from those, which in regards to lore can be quite beneficial for your mental health, talking of experience here, I would certainly give Linux a try. Big recommendation is, like I said multiple times, Linux Mint for its ease of use and familiar feel. And then I could recommend some Arch-based distros, which I will link in the description. Additionally, with everything else I think is good and a must have. Like I already mentioned at the start, I am working off a proper modding solution as well for games, because the ones that are available at the moment are somewhat iffy. And additionally, I also work on a bigger video regarding Linux use for ex-Windows users and people in general as well, which will be hopefully published in the next few weeks. I just have to finish the script and everything else for that. And if you are interested in those, just hit the subscribe button and you hopefully will be notified then. Thank you. Bye.